Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown, and this is LA Currents. The power of one for the benefit of the many. It was in 1980 that a social worker, Tanya Tull, saw that there was a need to help the youth in Skid Row, the ones that were at risk. Well, needless to say, a lot has changed with the program since then, and I'm delighted today to be joined by the CEO and president of Para Los Niños, Drew Ferretti. So nice to have you here. Okay, 1980, one person, one space, who knows how many children that were being helped, cut to 40 plus years later. Oh my word. It's breathtaking. It right? is. It's amazing, I, I think amazing from a, a number of points. One is that here's, as you said, here's a social worker who sees something in the social conditions of youth and says, this will not be, and gets a bunch of civic-minded people to say, okay, you're, you're right, it cannot be, not in this place, mm -hmm. and go and, and rehab a warehouse, and fa like you said, fast forward 41 years, and now we are from what was just, let's make a safe place for kids, very young, unsupervised, unsafe situation to where we are now, where we are in 17 locations across LA, uh, doing everything from working with babies uh, in, at, in our preschools and in our early education centers, all the way up to youth uh, that are, have been knocked off the path and we're helping to sort of partner with them to get back on the path and everything in between. We, we're working with kindergartners, through eighth graders in schools every day. We have Head Start and Early Head Start programs, community work, all that. But all of it with this backbone of the approach that, of course, a social worker thought of this. Mm -hmm. That the way you think about and, and partner with and create success for youth, particularly the most vulnerable, is you think about that child in the context of their family and their community. And you don't focus on one thing. You focus on the entire so a holistic approach, and we have, it's in, it's the backbone of our work is just this wraparound service approach. So in all the educational sort of typical spaces I just mentioned, we have mental health therapists, we have family case aides and case managers and social workers, all saying what is in the way of success? Well, it shouldn't be, okay. and let's pick it up. So that's an enormous scope yeah. of work. And as you said, it's a holistic approach. But let's go ahead and so I can visualize it in my mind. What's the structure of the organization? And how is all of this, you know, put together in an, in, in an organizational fashion? Okay, so it, it's funny. Some days I feel like I don't know how to explain <laughs> it as well as I should. But um, so... I would start with, with a quick thing, uh, uh, and it's going to sound like branding, but we talk about uh, our three pillars, and, and that's excellent education, powerful families, strong communities. Okay. All that leads to thriving children and youth, and here's how we get there. Okay. So we have, I mentioned, uh, we have early childhood education. So that's six weeks old to five years old uh, in seven different locations throughout L.A. Uh, we have our charter schools. We have a... a, a School that three works. Three of them, right? Three of them, yes. One that, two that are elementary age, one that is middle school age. Um, we have our youth workforce services uh, section and department that does work, operates several uh, city uh, youth source centers where we see close to 2,000 youth, 14 to 24 year olds, every year. Kids that have been pushed off the path or, or something wasn't working in the regular path, and we're working alongside them to get them into careers, get them finishing high school, and on into college. So you have all those things, and we have an entire department that works on comprehensive family services. So we're working in home, working in school, we're working in community to support the holistic needs, social emotional wellness, mental health uh, wellness, and, and, and all the things that they cut come into that. Plus, we do work uh, through a partnership called Best Start. Uh, we do work around uh, the metro area of LA and beyond uh, into the southeast cities and, and, and other areas where we are doing uh, work around partnering with neighborhood residents, we, neighborhood leadership groups, where we are partnering with residents to lift up what is the most important thing in that community and how do you make that change that creates a better community and a, a more holistically uh, safe community so that children can thrive. 
So the original warehouse space, yes. is it still there? It's still there. And we're still on the same block. We have an early childhood center right there on that block. We have our mental, one of our mental health uh, clinics and, and drop-in centers and offices is there. Down the street is one of our, uh, uh, is our middle school. Down the street the other way is our uh, elementary school. Um, so we, we tend to, I said, we're 17 locations across the area, but there are several areas that we, we have a lot of, of sort of concentration, we almost call them hubs. So the Skid Row and, and downtown area, um, MacArthur Park, uh, Westlake, Pico Union area, and then over, uh, up over into East Hollywood. Uh, and in that area, we have several of our early childhood centers. And then go out to East LA and, and different places in between. So how do people find your services or how do you find people that need your services? Great question. So um, one thing we talk about, so uh, stop me if I'm digressing here. No, but, no, no. But one thing we talk about is today's world talks a lot about what does it mean to be trauma informed? And I'll okay. get the answer to your question, I promise. What does it mean to be trauma informed? And, and what is that all about? And we think about strength-based resiliency approach really rooted in relationships. So we know that the, the world can be a, a very inhospitable place to, to say it even just mildly to so many youth and families. The way you, you combat that is you make sure that there is a strong, stable relationship with an adult and with others in the community and you build from there. So how does that r relate back to where people find us? Right. We have generational relationships of trust and effort and, and togetherness with so many families that uh, every year uh, at our middle school, I'll give you that, that as an example, every year at our middle school, we always pull aside some kids for a, a special picture because those are the kids that have been with us. They're grad culminating eighth grade. Um, many of them have been with us in so many different ways since they were in diapers. So they stay with us and their cousins and brothers and sisters are connected with us. So much of what we do is actually word of mouth. Uh, in, our, in the youth source centers I mentioned, we, it's not that we don't have to do uh, advertising. I, I talk, to, to, talk to the program leads off, often about this. They know that the word of mouth from student to student to student or youth to youth is going to bring other kids in, other, they're not kids, they're youth, other youth in uh, to, to access our services. And so we just see that, that that's, that's the way to really build on and leverage those relationships. And to make sure that we're going to use this word for the final time today, because <laughs> I've used it too much already, the holistic approach, making sure that the parents have an interactive experience with their children and making sure that the parents are supported so that the children can thrive. Why was that part of the program? I think the other way, the, the, the thing I'd add to, to that is, um, I'll put it this way. If I talk to one of our early childhood uh, center teachers or a, a, a teacher in our charter schools or a case manager in our, um, in, is doing work helping kids that are uh, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old get more classes and things. I will tell them, okay, welcome to Para Los Niños. You are more likely or just as likely to walk past another teacher as you are a therapist or somebody we call a case manager or uh, a family support specialist because that's the, that's the se secret sauce, or that's the, mm -hmm. the idea behind this holistic approach, is that take, take our, our middle school, for example. Um, we have, uh, we's, we're right down the street from Union Rescue Mission, mm. the only uh, family serving uh, homeless shelter in the area. And middle school, our middle school serves that, that population. So I always, Think about this. If you're an eighth grader and you're worried about where you're going to sleep, how are you going to focus on the eighth grade math standards? So we think you can do both. You can have the sort of support. You can have, a, be it a therapist, a social worker, somebody to kind of support you through those things so that you can attend to the stuff that's going to put you back or keep you on a path to succeed. So it, oftentimes, I think in our, in our world, we we make this false choice. You can either be about grades or you can be about sort of this social emotional wellness. And we think that that is a false choice. You should be able to be about both. 
Um, and there are some days when one takes precedence, but that doesn't mean you forget about the other. Something you just said about the, um, you know, the homeless shelter is that um, it's not a stable environment. It's, it's a transient environment. I mean, those people are, may be there for a while or they may have, um, but a youth participating in any kind of school environment from a homeless situation, it's transient. So you are constantly dealing with, I would imagine, a fluid population in your schools. That's a heavy lift. It is. It is. That's the other reason we say if you're coming to work with Padre Los Niños, this is a special place. We will make sure you are fully supported, but this is not uh, not like other places that you've worked. Um, and because of that, we just we we lean in to a model that really supports around those things. Because you may have a child one day for a month, maybe has half a semester, maybe a whole semester, and then yeah. So w there there are families that. Um, will get, will stay with us um, and then get transitional housing. Mm -hmm. That might be, uh, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking back to pre-COVID, but might be a couple bus rides away, but they're still coming from their transitional housing. They're no longer in the shelter, but they are connected to services. They're connected to a community that sees them for who they are, the wholeness of them, and sees them for who they can be. Speaking of COVID, yes. you had to do a pivot just like everyone else yes. had to do a pivot. And I mean, you're providing the things that yes. um, these youth and these families needed yeah. during the pandemic. How was that for you? Um, awe inspiring in so many ways. Um, in that, um, I, I, was, I was saying to somebody the other day that um, I feel like we, we not that we're done, because we're far from done. But thinking back at, you know, we're getting ready for this new school year and, and all those things, um, thinking back to what we could have, what could have happened and what did happen, I feel like in some ways we're stronger than we ever were. Um, and this has been like for our staff, for our families, for our, our uh, all students and youth, this has been remarkably painful, right? Like, I don't have to tell you, you, you know it, you see it. Um, Everybody's had a loss in some ways, and some of them have been just cut so deep. Um, but we maintained all of our services. We flipped to remote like, like many others did. We maintained all of our services, and then we sort of stood up in areas where we didn't do work prior. So food delivery, food delivery, a uh, million boxes uh, or meals of food out o over the last... Uh, however long this has been, 18 months if we're saying that now. Um, we've had devices, additional devices when the hotspots didn't work, um, Chromebooks, uh, formula, diapers, you name it, it's been, it's been going out. So doing that while we're also maintaining the connection and the personal, it goes back to the relationship, really knowing that for many people, Para los Niños team is a trusted neighborhood and community resource and really to make sure that we make the most of that. From an internal perspective, I did have the opportunity to hear you talk at one point in time and how you were conducting your, um, keeping the, the team yeah. together and how you started every single team meeting with a moment of mindfulness. Yes. Mindfulness, how do you define mindfulness yeah. and what was the exercise and what did it actually do to the team even though you were all separated and you were trying to do this good work um, from virtual standpoint? Yeah, so um, uh, what does it mean for the, well, I, I can tell you what it's meant for me. It's, yeah. it's, been, it's been absolutely uh, life-saving in some ways, it feels like, and soul-saving. Um, we really kind of go at it from a, let's be in this moment and um, for, for some people, that's just focusing on their breath and getting a calm space because in the beginning of this, as, as you know, we've talked about, by the minute it seemed to, everything would change, right? And the world is telling you that it is collapsing around you. And you have to be somebody at work now when you're managing and balancing all the other things. So we would do um, what were weekly and then as time has gone on, uh, sort of stretch them out a little bit, but regular Zoom meetings for our entire staff. So, and we have 450-ish people, so getting everybody on Zoom meetings and starting with a, okay, let's just breathe, let's get into the space, and then let's tell you what we know. 
Let's tell you what we don't know, and then let's talk about what we're doing in our programs. Part of why I said to you, I feel like we walked out of whatever this, what walked into this next phase stronger than ever, is that we used to own, because we're so uh, sort of far and wide in the, in the work that we do, and such different kind of work in different spaces, we would only, uh, in, the, in the old days, we would only get together once a year. Oh, okay. For an all-staff uh, picnic, right? We could time it for one day. Uh, we've switched now to, we get together, now, it was every week, now it's at least once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. We're on these Zoom meetings, and people are able to connect what they do and the needs of their particular clients or, or families or students with, oh, I just heard somebody give an update about that program. My kids or my students or my clients could use that. Oh, wow. And so it's really, it, it, in some ways, it's facilitated both a deeper um, just connection, personal connection, odd to say, since we were in the Zoom boxes, but it's also created this additional opportunity for just integration and connection programmatically. I want to imagine it's informed you um, oh. from a position so that you have a little bit more understanding about what is needed yes. and where it's needed and why. Yes. If you have 400 staff members, mm -hmm. how many clients? And Every, I don't, I, I'm using yeah, that word yeah, in, a, yeah. in a very generic yeah. way, so, but you know what I'm saying. How many right. people are you helping? So um, in a typical year prior to, to, to COVID, we, we really work with about 6,000 children, youth, and families. Wow every year and that's gone up uh, just in the work that we've been doing um, and we'll see what we already know that you know there's the needs have if 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 anything they've deepened uh, or because of what the world is, is going through um, yeah. and I think that the last thing I'll say just about the, the staff and, and the way we've connected is that um, so our staff uh, we live, we are from and live in some of the communities uh, that, many of the communities that, that we, we work with. And so the, the one that creates a, a, a layer of relationship that, that is just powerful. Mm -hmm. But the other is, the reality is the, the pain and suffering of what we've seen from our families has brought itself onto the, the staff. Yeah. And we've seen loss, we've seen um, impact of, of COVID and the economic impact and the health impact in ways I never expected I, I would be uh, seeing three, four years ago. Right? Sure. Well, and I mean, needless to say, it's, it's not surprising that what Tanya saw as a social worker, just a, spa a safe space for mm -hmm. children to, you know, be, to play and to learn, et cetera, has morphed and changed and everything over the years. But where are you seeing Para Los Niños needing to go with all yeah. of this new information and all of these new concerns that you have realized over the last 18 months, but also over the last yeah. 41 years? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I, 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 it's a big answer, so it, it, don't try to yeah, make it, it uh, I'll, I'll just react a, a few different ways. One is, Look, it, it goes a little bit to that deepening of the work. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, some people think about, like, what's the future of an organization or a business, or, or what, I don't know businesses, but what are the future of, a, of an organization they think about? How do you expand the number of people you're, you're, you're uh, kind of impacting and supporting? Uh, we think about this as not about what, how many more will we serve but what and partner doing? with, but how deep mm -hmm. do we need to get and can we get? So. Um, for us, that's adding social workers to many of our sites or adding uh, family support specialists or people that are there to really be right next to parents, right next to students and clients and hearing what is it that's going on and how can we help. So deepening the services while also thinking about, okay, so we're not going to turn into a food distribution place, but we now have different relationships that we've built. So our uh, Best Start uh, team worked with uh, nonprofits and, and providers across LA to just get a network of food and supplies out. Mm -hmm. So now we can think about, all right, now we have an even greater opportunity to, to stitch together in and in weave together, mm -hmm. right? Some support for so many more and not have to 
you know, not that we did think before that we did it by ourselves, but really to, to right. kind of go even further into partnerships. What about more schools? You know, I... I because well, you come from LAUSD, so you have, <laughs> you know, that's kind of an area of expertise yeah, in your yeah. world. You know, I, I look at that and say, what called Para Los Niños before I, I even got here, obviously, what inspired uh, previous uh, groups here to move into charter schools and, and, just, and schools and other things was there wasn't anybody out there that could do the kind of work that we, that we do, that wraparound holistic support. Um, so I look at other, other, other people say, are you going to open in other schools? I think, you know what, if there's high quality opportunities and all of our families and kids can get access to them, and they really are thinking about relationships, thinking about social emotional wellness, thinking about academic success, and looking at and partnering with and standing next to our families, mm -hmm. then we're not needed in that space. So there have been more positive stories coming out of this organization than can possibly be counted. Mm -hmm. But as your role mm -hmm. of sharing the story with the community at large and to there must be a few that have stuck with you yeah. that make you get up in the morning and do the good work, but also yeah. inspire others to join you in that work. Where are those stories? Yeah. And they probably change, but what are the ones that come top of mind right now? Well, I'll, I'll tell one that, that starts and is, it's, it's sort of shot through with, with sadness, but, but it is a, it, it, I think it's an important one. Okay. So in, the, in March of 2020, very beginning of this, um, one of our uh, families uh, that has a, had and has a, a baby in one of our early ed centers and a child in a charter school and another in, in one of our other charter schools. Father was the sole, sole uh, breadwinner for the, for the family and he passed away, COVID. Oh gosh. Um, and what you saw then was this incredible embrace at a distance, obviously, doing everything safely, but an embrace of a family's needs. So um, making sure that one, technology was there, food was there, mom was, was nervous about going, using public transportation to get to the food distribution places, our team went and made sure that she got food, brought it out to that family so that they kept going. Diapers, formula, all those things kept going. And really supporting them not just with the concrete things, but saying, but being there from our, our case managers and our social workers really pay attention and make sure that we knew where they were, how they were doing, and moving them on and on. So fast forward a year and a half, we still live with the sadness of the father passing away, but that family is in a much different place. Mm -hmm. Kids are thriving, kids are, are, are engaged and spent all of last year engaged in remote school. Um, mom has a path through. I mean, this is everybody from our, uh, every part of our organization really getting together uh, and saying we're going to make sure that, that um, we do what we do. That mental health aspect yeah. of what it is, um, you talked at the very beginning of our chat about mm -hmm. trauma survival and trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you noticed that that part of your work is growing Absolutely. and the need for that part of your work is growing? Absolutely. So uh, uh, I think a, maybe, a, maybe a, a good thing uh, if you think about the entire world about, um, and I think this from a, from a K-12 perspective, but just from a, a, across the landscape perspective, a good thing is that more people are talking about um, and maybe moving towards uh, an acceptance of a school is about more than just your academic standards. Um, success is more is about a whole range of things, a holistic approach. So there's, I think, greater acceptance now about just social emotional wellness, mental health awareness, the need to to attend to those things. I think the the other piece is that you, ha you we have an opportunity to really push to further destigmatize mm -hmm. the idea of mental health is some, somehow something you don't talk about mm -hmm. or, or is, makes you less than. Um, so we know that, that 
uh, we, we've, we've hired up to make sure that we are there. I mean, next we're, we'll be starting school soon, and we want to make sure that we have full support around. We're already in our early childhood uh, centers that are up and going, and we've made sure that the mental health component and support and resources is there, not just for our kids and families, but for our staff. Right. Right? I mean, because whether you're a, a teacher in one of our um, toddler classrooms or you're a, a case manager in our youth center or a, a, a teacher in one of our uh, schools or an aide or what, you're bringing this experience and your, your whole self to now to places that might feel a little anxiety inducing. Sure, sure. Um, and so really being there for, for them as well. You can't do it alone. Right. You've obviously gotten um, wonderful partnerships, as you mentioned, um, fiscal support from an interesting array, including yeah. most recently, you even got some federal money. What can the Tanya, the Tanyas of the Tanya Tulls of the world do? You know, people who just don't have the wherewithal to just work for you full time or you know, give you the amazing fiscal support they'd like. But what if they just want to help? We have a range of, of volunteer opportunities and, and both short term and long term. I think we're, we're probably pretty standard on that. But, but the, the diversity of, of opportunities is, I, I think, kind of cool. Not a technical term, but it, everything from reading to, to with, with very young children to interview prep and resume review and helping a, a, a youth who's had a bumpy path but is ready to really soar, helping them get ready for a college. Uh, interview or an application or a job or their first job uh, interview, everything in between, um, being on panels, doing th those sorts of things. Like we have, we have all of that. Plus, you know, just raising, raising the voice about this is, this stuff works. The, the idea of thinking about things holistically, it works. Um, thinking about mental health, as we've talked about, social emotional wellness, academic success, communities defining their own issues and, and, and saying, we are leaders, you're not doing for, you might do with, mm -hmm. but you're not doing for. Um, and so all the, I think that's just more the, the voice raising and friend raising that, that we think about doing. Um, we are online, uh, www.paralosninos.org, mm -hmm. and we are at Paralosninos org, all one, uh, mm -hmm. on all the social media uh, channels. but. Uh, you know, there, there's opportunities there on the website. Uh, we, I, you, you mentioned uh, our supporters. I think one of, the, so I've been with the organization a couple of years. One thing that, that I was just blown away by and, and continue to be blown away by is that we have people, sure, we have, we have institutional supporters. We have incredible philanthropic supporters. We have, uh, we, we have congressional supporters, Congressman Jimmy Gomez, uh, mm -hmm. Congressman Adam Schiff, um, have been incredible for us, um, and so many, many more. Uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, and, and you, you name it, Senator Padilla, so supportive, um, and all local officials. But we also have this incredible array of people who every year will send, here's my $10, Aww. here's my $100. And that's just amazing. And this is people year after year after year. We always tell people, um, we, we always say to ourselves at least, you know, if, if we get people down to one of our sites, one of our centers, one of our schools, you're hooked because just the, the, the power of potential is just, it, it grabs you. Well, how delightful to talk with you today and how inspiring in so many ways. And you are a very mindful person. I can sense it from across the table. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, it was great chatting. Likewise. Thank you.